Welcome everyone. Today we're discussing the Taigang-1 space station. And most people are asking, where's it going to crash? What's going to happen when it does crash? Well, let's answer the first question to start with. Why China's Taigang-1 space station could crash almost anywhere. And I don't mean almost anywhere, it's pretty much narrowed down there is some tracking information I will try to put in the links below. You guys are welcome to check out. The Taigang 1 is likely out of control and headed for a collision with our atmosphere and perhaps with Earth itself. We all know this. Figuring out where it's going to land is almost nearly impossible task. These are the reasons why it's almost a near impossible task. As it slowly falls back, uncontrollable, to Earth, trying to attempt to predict exactly where it's going to land is beyond extremely difficult. So you have most of your highest degreed scientists arguing where it's going to land to start with. I don't know if I've mentioned it before in any of the other videos. If you haven't seen those, please go back and, and uh, check those out. Um, I have a few other videos about the Taigang 1. Basically, it translates into heavenly place so that you can be up to date on the information about the satellite, its size, its weight, other things about it. With that said, though, the very wide swath of middle latitude stretching from the north of the United States continent to the southern Australia is basically the places where it's going to possibly collide. After it hits the atmosphere and starts to burn up, those are the areas that it could possibly crash or, or splash down in, the, in one of the oceans. Um, at most, we would be able to narrow down the re-entry location to two or three orbit revolutions of the Earth. That means that the re-entry could occur somewhere along a path that extends two to three times around the planet. Let me repeat that. That means that the re-entry could occur somewhere along a path that extends two to three times around the planet. That's a very long path. Even the principal engineer for um, the Center of Orbital and Reentry Debris Studies, which is CORD, C-O-R-D-S, has said this himself. The problem is with the prediction this is just a prediction. It's, the possible entry reentry times are based on radar observations that um, are typically not made frequently enough to formulate solid predictions. Now, with that said, let's let's get into a little brighter, bigger area of it. We know when someone sees a, a bright, spectacular breakup event or is no longer appears to the observer, which is the radar, when expected, once those visible streaks are in the sky and are seen, it will let, it'll let us know that the region of the globe may be hit within a few, if any, striking hunks of debris that may make it all the way to the surface. But it will be basically impossible to pinpoint a possible impact zone because it will be breaking up. This this debris will fall at different rates. Um, and depending on the angle that it will actually be re-entering, you know, a, a direct crash won't spread out debris as far and as wide, in a, you know, of a swath. Keep that in mind. If you're taking a... a um, the, the degree of the angle as this thing re-enters the Earth. I was going to try to <laughs> describe it here, but I think that's the best way to describe it. I was going to try to describe it with basically picture a round ball if you did a head-on collision versus a skip. And that skip would follow around as the Earth rotates. And then that debris would be over a, a wide area. What they aren't telling you, this is one of the crazy things that they're not telling you. Even when re 
uh, like a meteor, uh, a meteor, uh, blah, excuse me, a meteorite collides with the atmosphere. It sends a shock wave that can blow out windows on ground level. Depending on the size of the chunk of the meteor, meteorite, or let's just call it space trash, there's other, other things. I'm hoping it doesn't hit over a populated area because it, it could cause some damage. You know, sometimes things re-enter and it, it, the pieces are so small that there's no damage at all. You got to remember that the, the, the speed that this, this impact is going to be coming in is in the impact zone where it's going to be. It could be, it, you know, it's, it's a wide area. Now, with that said, keep in mind that objects in orbit, even a decaying orbit, are moving very fast. Even one minute error in the prediction of the re-entry times will move the location of the event 280 miles. That's 448 kilometers. The re-entry event itself takes several minutes. So keep that in mind when someone's, you know, doing a prediction. There are some places you can go and watch and see where this satellite now is hovering, where it's, where it's, Orbiting rotations are, but nevertheless, you should keep an eye on the sky as April and the Tigon 1 approach very fast, my friends. So, if, if we're able to live stream this event, we have YouTubers from around the world who will be in coordination with us to live stream this actual incident. If it happens over a, a populated area, if we're able to catch it as it streaks across the the sky, given weather conditions are uh, are clear, day or night, because this thing is going to be moving, like I said, pretty fast. You, you figure for every one minute in era, that prediction, that reentry time, moves the location 280 miles. That's 448 kilometers. That's that's a that's a huge, huge uh, area. So, if we're able to. You will see it here first. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so if you want to catch this live event. Thank you so much. Rebel State Sovereign, and I'm out. Much love.